Let's imagine you live in 2011 and choose GPU for gaming. You have two options – lower-end GTX 550 Ti and mid-range GTX 560 Ti. Let's look how these GPUs hold today. So I'm gonna test in old and new games to see different by years. But first of all, let's look at the specs. Both these GPUs are made by 40 nanometers TSMC technology. Same 1 gig GDDR5 VRAM. Memory bus is wider on 560 Ti, 255 bit versus 192 bit. What leads to higher memory bandwidth? And the main difference is CUDA core count, 192 versus 384. It's exactly two times difference. The GPUs also differ in frequencies and inner minor parameters. Today I'm gonna test the GTX 550 Ti from Pallet, a very simple cooling system with one fan and small heatsink. On the other side, a GTX 560 Ti from MSI with two fans and big heatsink with four heat pipes. That cooling system is necessary for 560 Ti because it consumes 170 watts. For comparison, 550 Ti consume only 116 watts. What is strange that 550 Ti has more variety of ports HDMI, DVI and VGA. 560 Ti can boast two DVI and mini HDMI. Why did MSI put mini HDMI instead of standard HDMI? I don't even know. Test system i5 3570K, 4 cores and 4 frets. That CPU is gonna be enough to not create bottleneck. RAM is DDR3 16 gigs and 3 SSDs to store all games. Full system specs you can see on the screen. Let's start with some older games. Mafia 2, 1080p, maximum settings. A two-fold increase cannot be surprised. All through, on the other hand, it is expected. The difference in the number of cores is exactly two times, and the frequency of the 560 Ti is also higher, so double FPS increase was a really good reason to spend more and buy 560 Ti in 2011. Portal 2. 1080p, maximum settings. 560 Ti performs really well, more than 100 FPS. Situation on 550 Ti, good too. Bioshock Infinite, 1080p, maximum settings. At the year of release, the game was a graphical masterpiece. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I know. But in 2013, you couldn't play The Last of Us or GTA 5 on PC. On 560 Ti, playable 40 FPS. Personally, I would lower graphics to get stable 60. GTA 5, 1080p, minimum settings, 2x MSAA. Again, stunning two times difference. If you turn off MSA, you can get about 50-60 FPS on 550 Ti. But sadly, GPUs are limited to 1 gig VRAM, and increasing overall graphics quality can impact performance. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 720p minimum settings. Welcome to 720p gaming. It's stunning that 2011 mid-range GPU, I'm talking about 560 Ti, can run 2018 almost graphically most demanding game at 40-50 FPS. You can easy complete all game. What about 550 Ti? Yeah, that hurts. Control 720p minimum settings. I always keep in mind that control is more demanding than Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but in that test, result speaks for themselves. CS2 720p minimum settings. More than 100 FPS on 560 Ti. Wow, but it's not that simple. 
performance can vary greatly from map to map. For example, on the most demanding map, Inferno, 560 Ti gives out from 30 to 40 FPS. 100 FPS is not even visible here, but on Dust 2, yeah, you can get an honest 100 FPS. But I would not recommend either this nor that GPU for CS2. Beam NG Drive 1080p minimum settings. What Beam NG is doing here? It's a 2013 game. Very simple. After all these years, Beam NG got ton of updates, and now it's really demanding. Then on release, more than two times difference. My personal opinion is that beyond graphical chip, here performance is really impacted by lower memory bandwidth. Because BeamNG really loves high VRAM speed. Minecraft 1.21 with complementary shaders. 1080p, very low profile, 16 chunks. Again, 560Ti totally dominating against 550Ti. Atomic Heart 720p, minimum settings. Last game on today tests. Only hardcore Russian gamers can play Atomic Heart on these GPUs. It's all fun, but I have one fun fact. GTX 500 series have partial support of DirectX 12. For me, it was shocking that this GPU can run DX12 title. Today here was observation of two people who could technically buy 550Ti or 560Ti at that time. It is clear that person who brew 560Ti got opportunity to play all new games much more comfortably than a colleague on 550Ti. But still, one gig of video memory is strong minus for both GPUs. Write in the comments, maybe you used one of these GPUs? Or maybe you are currently watching this video from a such GPU. For my personally, that 550Ti was my first own video card. If you like video, subscribe and leave a like. And see you next time.